You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. After an 18-month impasse, Newcastle United finally have new owners. Mike Ashley has gone, replaced by a group comprising Saudi Arabia's Sovereign Wealth Fund, the Public Investment Fund, the Rubin Brothers and Amanda Staveley. But why has this been such a protracted saga? And why has the takeover group's long-term legal dispute with the Premier League suddenly ended? In July 2020, the takeover failed to clear the Premier League's owners and directors test after concerns about the lack of separation between the Public Investment Fund, which was set to own an 80% stake in the club, and the Saudi state itself, which remains entwined with a raft of human rights issues which TIFO covered fully in a video linked below, released in 2020. The central issue, however, was a saga which dates back to 2018 when Qatar filed a complaint with the World Trade Organization claiming that Saudi Arabia was blocking BIN, a Qatari company and a Premier League rights holder from broadcasting in the country. Qatar also accused Saudi Arabia of failing to take effective action against alleged piracy of BIN's content by BOutQ, a pirate broadcaster. And the BIN Corporation had been engaged in a $1 billion investment arbitration with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in response. As a rights holder, BIN has significant influence within Premier League circles, and the broadcaster's CEO, Youssef El Obaidli, wrote to the chairman of other top flight clubs in 2020, accusing Saudi Arabia of the facilitation of the near three year theft of the Premier League's commercial rights. So, what's changed now? Well, Saudi Arabia has reversed its ban on BIN in the territory, and BOutQ has now had its service terminated. The Kingdom has also committed to acting against any other pirate stations that be in reports in the future, and with those assurances, the takeover's principal obstacle has been removed. The Premier League insists, though, that the legally binding assurances about the separation between the PIF, which is chaired by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and has assets of £300 billion, and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia are the true cause of the breakthrough, rather than the end of a copyright issue. Regardless, Amnesty International has been uncompromising in its response to the news that the takeover has been resurrected. Instead of allowing those implicated in serious human rights violations to walk into English football simply because they have deep pockets, said Sasha Deshmuk, the organization's chief executive, we've urged the Premier League to change their owners and directors' test to address human rights issues. TIFO will continue to cover this story as it develops. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. Not to mention, it's all ad-free. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.